So what are your plans coming up this weekend? You're going to I caught up with there. Susan Ferrier, who's Global Head of People at KPMG, in her office at Canary Wharf, and asked for her perspectives on leadership, gender equality, and much else besides. What for you are the, the challenges and, and advantages of being a female leader? I think challenges involve several things. Firstly, I think sometimes the bar um, is held higher for women than it is for men, particularly female leaders who occupy very senior positions. I think the scrutiny that they get um, and, the, and the sort of uh, way in which they conduct themselves is even at a higher level um, than sometimes their male peers. I think men can sometimes get away with um, uh, things. Uh, they can particularly, men can particularly get away with a throwaway remark more than I think women can when they're in certain roles. Mm -hmm. So that I think is mm -hmm. unfair. Mm -hmm. um, secondly, I think the challenges are that if you're a working mother, um, uh, there are a lot of perceptions and perhaps unfair judgment that sometimes gets gets uh, labelled or used with mm. working um, mothers and that's hard to, to manage. Um, and then thirdly, I think that if women demonstrate emotion um, in the workplace, it can get very quickly labelled mm. around, I think, an unfair um, uh, sense that they're not, in they're not in charge of what they're up to or they're not in control or they don't have a plan or they're... Um, they're not focused and I, I think that can be, that's mm -hmm. kind of unfair sometimes mm -hmm. as well. So that's the challenges side. The, the, the benefits or the, or the value that I think women bring um, as female leaders is I think that we can, we bring people together sometimes in a different way to men. I think women are, can are potentially, or at least my generation of women are more, um, uh, compared to my generation of men, I think we're more naturally inclusive, so we can bring people together in a way which looks to pr looks to looks for a collaborative, inclusive outcome. Mm -hmm. So, in many many cases, women of my generation are less oriented around power, and we just want to get the right solution. So, we bring people together in a different way. I think the second thing that I think um, that women can bring is that we sometimes have different different experiences that. Um, are of incredible value, particularly in a world that is as disruptive and volatile and un uncertain as the one we are right mm -hmm. now. We've been less oriented, I think, around a kind of vertical, yeah. simplistic pathway. Um, we've had to kind of dodge and weave yeah. and move in, in lattice mm -hmm. career paths, um, which I think helps mm. uh, with a different kind of decision making that I think the current context calls for. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, I think that the emotional side of women, they're more oriented to bring a human-centered orientation to mm -hmm. the decisions and the discussions, and that I think is a, a real superpower mm. um, that I, I often encourage my female leaders to bring to the table. That's a great answer, it's a great answer. So what sort of things do you do to keep your work interesting? I am uh, voraciously curious, uh, which sometimes can drive my colleagues crazy <laughs> and my team crazy. I, um, I, you know, I think ask lots of questions, read a lot, um, uh, go to unexpected places, be close to c customers, um, uh, listen a lot, say not a lot sometimes kind mm. of quell quell the need to be able to ex expound or um, make statements that for me keeps things interesting because you can then learn a lot from others learn a lot from context mm. um, be in the world yeah. you know see things take take mm. in external stimuli in a way which helps helps maintain um, a sort of level of energy and mm. interest in what you're doing and what are the qualities that you think are going to be necessary to be a great head teacher in the next 10 to 15 years that are different from when we grew up? Okay, oh gosh. Um, well, one of the things that I've been saying, and I think the same thing applies to um, head teachers, one of the things I've been saying to my team, uh, not just 
globally, but when I was leading the team um, in Australia, is that we all need to become technologists in some shape or form. And what I mean by that is not necessarily knowing how to code, although I do think you need to understand the process of coding, uh, but I think feeling really comfortable around technology. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I encourage my team to do is to download a new app every month and just play with it, even if you don't end up keeping it on your mm -hmm. iPhone or your iPad or your other, um, your Android, at least be investigating the world of mm -hmm. technology on a kind of um, amateur basis, yeah. if you know what I mean. So that's, I think I'd be encouraging head teachers to be really really curious mm -hmm. about technology. Um, in my experience, actually, often head teachers are a step ahead of even business mm -hmm. um, in that respect because they, you know, you, they, they're really using technology, or at least the head teachers I've been involved with, um, particularly in Australia, really using technology in, in new and interesting ways. So my children have been taught about robotics since the age of sort of six and seven in Australia, whereas I'm surrounded by a whole bunch of um, colleagues who don't know the first thing about um, Robotics. In so, Europe? Yeah. Mm. Um, so, uh, you know, I think sometimes head, head teachers are one or two steps ahead of it. So that'd be one area. So keep, mm. keep really curious around um, AI, cognitive, mm. machine learning, um, all, all the, all, and, and the possibilities that that presents. I think you need to put it on, to very, on a very positive footing. Mm i.e. this is not about jobs being stolen, this is about new jobs and working alongside machines as trusted partners who can help the world be better. Mm -hmm. um, the second thing I'd say is I think the demands of leaders, including head teachers, are just increasing. And so keep investing in your own development as a leader. Uh, keep going to conferences, keep doing this kind of work because Leadership for me is a practice, a bit like yoga. You have to practice it every day. Um, and so that means investment, that means making mistakes, that means you know, expanding and extending your leadership capability and do that for yourself as an individual, but also uh, with your team. So invest in the team around you and spend time doing leadership practice. Right. Yeah. I'm sure in your role you've seen some dumb things that people do. Do you have any advice on what traps to avoid? Dumb things, gosh, I can think of a long <laughs> list that I've done. <laughs> Maybe I'll share those. Uh, dumb things. So, um, dumb things. I think number one dumb thing is um, don't try and be an expert on everything. In fact, perhaps don't try and be an expert on anything <laughs> these days. It's just impossible. So I think be open to not necessarily having to demonstrate your technical excellence in every single interaction. I know in the past where I've perhaps felt the need to be the technical expert, you soon find out that others know more than you do, so um, maybe manage that for yourself. Mm -hmm. Second thing I'd say is um, trying to be um, completely masterful in your leadership style is pretty dumb, I think, now. You need to have a heavy dose of vulnerability and humility mm. and, and be open to sharing that with others. So I know in the past when I've tried to be uber, uber capable and confident and on top of my um, brief, you can soon hit a wall. Okay. So kind of try and maintain a healthy dose of, I, of vulnerability. Mm. Um, and then the third dumb thing would be when you do do something dumb, to fess up fast say sorry, um, really say, I'm really sorry, don't, and then also don't make an apology which looks like, I'm sorry, but, and then give all the caveats for why actually you're not truly sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, just come up and come out with it and say, mm -hmm. I'm really sorry, that was not the best way to do things and to own your, own your own mistakes yeah. and move forward. Yeah. One of the big areas that you've been an advocate for in KPMG is gender equality. Yes. Can you say something about how that came about and also how you see it as being relevant for schools? Uh, so gender equality for me has been something that's been very hardwired in me from an early age. And I've, um, again, I'm not 100%, well, I, d I have a, a bit of an inkling for where that comes from. It probably mostly comes from the fact that I've had some extremely strong women in my family. And then I think I've just carried that through my whole life. Mm. And so whenever I've had the opportunity um, and the platform to 
speak to gender equity and or um, uh, uh, galvanise resources from an organisation to support mm. the the, um, the development and the advancement of women. Mm. I've jumped at the chance. Yep. So all through my, particularly um, through my time when I was working in London, I worked for investment banks mm. where there was significant gender issues um, cropping up and so I was able to work with senior leaders to help them prepare a plan and prepare strategies for how to address some of those issues. So it's been something that's been mm. very, very much a hallmark of my career. It's been yeah. innate. Yeah. yeah. So what are the two or three things that you do to keep you in good stead? Uh, I meditate. Um, I do yoga. I've only just been meditating in the last three to four years. So I have apps on my phone that I um, often use, but I also do little mini meditations. So for instance, on the way to, to this um, interview today, even in the lift when I was coming down, I just did a quick meditation. So I've got a real practice around that now. Mm. That's something that I've built in the last, put that habit I've built in the last, um, say, four or five years. Uh, I, I'm very um, good about what I eat, um, trying to stay healthy, particularly with in this new demanding job. So I'm... Uh, I've, I've got two. I've got a family that we're, we're, we all are very conscious of what we eat. So there's a lot of healthy food. I've got an amazing um, family that I draw on for strength a lot. My um, husband and children are my greatest advocates and champions. Um, but they're also uh, keep me down to earth. So you know, I've got four teenagers. So. They very much uh, can and can switch between yay mum to yeah whatever <laughs> you know. And if I'm getting too big for my boots, they bring me down to earth pretty quickly. <laughs> and then I've got some uh, really fantastic friends that I make sure that I take time to to nurture and uh, mm. and and keep that group of um, group group very much uh, close. Yeah. Good. So. What are the questions that you get asked by other women when you appear at conferences? Yes, I often get asked, um, how do you do it with four children? So what I say when they say that is that I think it's really difficult for one woman's version of how you um, do things to apply to other women. And so my first mm -hmm. response is everybody does it differently and there's mm -hmm. no one cookie cutter way to manage and the, the way that I manage is that my husband's actually a stay-at-home dad and he's been that for the last um, 16 years. That was a choice that we made. Mm. It was a bit of a pioneering choice to make 16 years ago. We both had careers at the time um, and that's been an really fantastic for us as a family but mm. that might not work for everyone. Um, my mum is nearby so you know when the need is there we ship her in pretty quickly. <laughs> Um, and, uh, you know, I've, I've, um, I use social media a lot with my kids, so I'm in contact with them daily. That, for me, social media has been a huge um, help for me to stay in touch um, with my family, particularly when I'm travelling. Yeah. We're really sorry that you can't be with us this year at the conference. Would you be able to come and visit us next year? I would love to be there next be. year. Let's get it in the diary now because then I can lock it in and, um, try and, and try and plan around it. Yes, I'd love to be with you in person next year. It'd be fantastic. Thank you. Thank you Susan. for the invitation. Thank you.